All right, so we are doing uh, target 1A. So this is our very first lesson. We're gonna do split this into a couple days. So the first part, we're uh, gonna be focusing on interpreting the structure of expressions, and we are gonna do that for the second day as well. But let's start off with some vocabulary for this section. Um, okay, so perimeter, in case you're not aware, it's the continuous line forming the boundary of a closed geometric figure. So like, let's say I had a triangle it would be the measure of the three sides. So starting here would be the measure of this side, this side, and then that side. All right. And then expression is a mathematical statement containing an operator, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and terms containing a number and or a variable. So it doesn't have to have a variable, um, but it just may. And then this we're going to get into tomorrow, but I wanted to kind of... Ex um, Kind of explain this now. So equivalent expressions are two expressions that are equal to each other. So you'd have an expression on one side with an equal sign and then an expression on the other side. And uh, you would have to kind of simplify those as much as possible and show that they were exactly the same or had the same value. So let's start with if you're asked to find the perimeter of an object. First step you want to do, so these are the steps that you would want to do if you're asked to find the perimeter of an object, is add up the measure of each side. And then you would combine any like terms. So for example, when I say combine like terms, if I had like 2x plus 2y plus x, and let's just say minus y, we'll throw that in there, you would combine any like terms. So here you have two x's, right? So you've got an x here, an x here, so two x. And remember, if there's nothing in front, that's a one. So the combining those two would be a three x. And then for your y's, you have a positive two y and a negative y. And again, that's a y. That's a one in front of the y. So if you have a positive two and a negative one and you put them together, you just have a positive y. So we'd say plus y. And that would be our simplified answer, um, 3x plus y. So here, let's look at our first example. Determine the expression used to represent the perimeter of, a geometric, of the geometric figure. So it doesn't matter which side you start, you want to add up all the sides. So if it was a triangle, you'd add up the three sides. If it was a, uh, in this case, we've got a square. So we're going to add up all four sides. So we have 2x plus 2x plus 2x plus 2x, because we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 that we're adding. So 2x plus 2x plus 2x plus 2x. Now, they all have an x, so they are all like terms. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this number that's in front for each one. Okay, This number in front, that's called the coefficient. So if you ever hear coefficient, that is the number in front of the variable. So all we do is do 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 8x. And that's as simplified as you can get it. So that's your answer. All right. Now, this, one, this part's a little bit tricky. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. And this is why we're splitting this into two days. So if you're writing an expression from a word sentence, um, you're asked to do that. You're sometimes going to be given word sentences and asked to write an expression from them. So for example, you might have a problem that says write an expression that represents six times the sum of a number and five. All right, so I'm not going to expect you to do that right now. Let's just take a look at, you know, what these, uh, what these words here mean. Okay, so times, sum, you know, a number, the numbers 6 and 5, you can pretty much make sense of those. But let's look at that. So what I've done is um, kind of split these into separate sections by their mathematical operator. So when you see words for addition, you have things like plus, sum, and total, uh, increased by, the total of. Those are all words for addition. Words for subtraction, less, less than. Now there's a big difference between this and this. So be careful of that. Removed, uh, separated, shorter than, smaller than, differ by. The ones that you're probably going to see the most in here, I'm going to change my color here, you're going to see, you know, plus, sum, and, 
total, you're not going to see combined as much. Perimeter means addition, that's important there. Added to, more than, increased by. Those are all going to be the sum of, here's another one. Uh, those are all going to be probably the ones you'll see the most. For subtraction, less, different, you're not going to see removed so much. Total, you're not going to see so much. Um, fewer, subtracted obviously, less than, decreased by. Um, the difference of, those are all and subtracted from. Uh, those are all going to be ones for subtraction. Now, with subtra addition is pretty easy because the order doesn't matter. With subtraction, uh, order does matter. So you've got to be careful when translating these sentences. For example, if we take the sentence 5 less than 20, what it is not is it is not 5 minus 20, which is what you might be tempted to do. All right. So the easiest way to kind of approach these is think about it like money. So if I have five less than $20, well, that's $15, five less. So I've got 10, five, and five. Uh, so that's $20, five less would give me just these two, which is $15. So less than kind of swaps the order of it, of the numbers. Um, if, it was, if it doesn't have then, and it just said five less 20, then the order stays the same. So it'd be five minus 20 in that case. So just be careful with less than. Okay, so I would definitely make sure that this is something that was in your notes. All right, so for division, quotient is one you're gonna see quite a bit of. I'm gonna change the color here again. So quotient you'll see a lot of. Um, out of, per, that's huge. Ratio, divided by obviously, okay. Um, and then for multiplication, times, product, multiplied by, double, triple, these two kind of go hand in hand because um, these are specific multipliers. So when you say something's doubled, it's times two. When you say something's tripled, it's times three. So these are very, very specific ones. Um, quadruple, that kind of uh, goes hand in hand. And uh, so you get the idea with that. And then finally, we have equals. So words for equals, obviously, equals. Um, is, is a big one, results in, um, becomes, eh, not so much. We're going to erase that one, actually. Um, is equivalent to, that's a big one. Has a, uh, is the same as, maybe. But mainly uh, equals is, results in, is equivalent to. When you have word sentences with equal signs, that's what you're going to uh, be looking for. And so, so here's some example translations. So we've got the quotient. Remember, quotient is division of n and 3. So when you have this, it's just you just put them in the exact same order. So that means n divided by 3, or n, you know, if this was written as a fraction, you could also write it like that. These two mean the same thing. We're, what we're going to try and get away from is this. Okay, we don't want to do that anymore. Do this instead. For less than x. Remember, less than the order swaps. So x minus 4. The sum, so that tells us addition, of 10 and y. Order doesn't matter with addition. You could do y plus 10, 10 plus y, it doesn't matter. 2 less than, okay, so there's that less than, the total of a number in 5. Okay, so we have n plus 5 minus 2. Okay, so the n plus 5 is because that, that's either going to come first or what I would suggest is actually putting it in parentheses. Because when you see something like this, two less than the total, that means that these two have to happen first. And remember, order of operation says stuff in parentheses. So if you go by PEMDAS, uh, the, the parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, and then addition, subtraction. Um, these have to come first, so you have to do n plus 5 first. And then you could actually simplify that down to n minus 3 because you would combine your like terms, 5 minus 2. And then x multiplied by 22, we're just going to write as 22x because when you have a variable and a number, you just put them together. Okay, we're not going to do this because obviously that looks a little funny. We're not going to do this either. All right, so let's go back to our original example. 
write an expression that represents six times the sum of a number in five. Okay, so it's six times the sum, so that means that this has to happen first. So we're going to put that in parentheses because it's six times the sum. So when you see something like this where it's an operator followed by another operator, that means that whatever this is right here is going to be in parentheses. So what I did is I, set, I took the numbers out. So six is a number, five is a number. Then when you see this a number, that means that that is a variable. Okay, that means it could be any number, so we make it a variable, so we call it x. It doesn't really matter what variable you use. You could use any letter. So 6 times, that's our operator, 6 times the sum, and, so that means we're at, this and this are connected, sum and add. So what we do is we say 6 times, so this in parentheses, if there's nothing in between, that means we're multiplying 6 by everything in here, and then the sum of a number x plus 5. All right, so these videos are just meant to introduce you uh, to the topics. I'm not expecting you to be pros at it or to even like really, really get it, um, but I do expect you to take notes and have questions when you come to class and anything you don't understand, and we are going to cover this in class. It's not like I give you these videos and that's it. So um, start with that, come to class with notes, and we'll work more on it tomorrow, and then you'll have part two tomorrow night. All right, have a good one, guys. Thanks a lot.